Hey guys, this is Mitch at Swap Time, and I want to go over the fuel system. Get a lot of questions about how it works and different ways of doing it, if it has to be done one way or another. What I got pulled up here is a fuel system description. This is from the L82, L84, and L87s. I call them the new generation engines from a, the new buy style trucks from 2020 and up. So we can go and look at this. I'm not going to try to read word for word, but uh, we'll just go over some of this information and I'll add on what I can. But it's uh, super advanced, very cool um, stuff going on here. So let's get into it and uh, we'll go through here and, and I'll talk about how this works. So basically with a fuel pressure control module and the uh, variable pressure um, pump and the variable variable pressures it's making it's going off just like it says it's going to go off these parameters right here which is what I notice if you're idling it's going to make around 54 pounds of pressure as you uh, I'm sorry it make about 45 pounds of pressure and as you get driving around go up and around the mid 50s then wide open throttle it's going to hit 74 pounds of pressure um, it will never go over 74 pounds of pressure because believe it or not, it's still a regulated system. The uh, fuel pump has a bypass valve in it. So once it uh, makes 74 pounds of pressure, it just bleeds it back off into itself. So we'll go back down here. Uh, this is something I didn't know anything about. It's pretty neat. The ECM compensates for a weak spark delivered by the system in uh, following ways. I've nev never noticed it doing anything like that, but it's interesting. Never use the clear flood mode. These don't ever flood, so it's nothing that I've ever had to do. The acceleration mode just cuts off fuel. It's called DEFCO. And as you can see, it shuts off, and this helps keep the catalytic converters healthy. Sometimes DEFCO gets uh, turned, uh, turned off and swaps because a lot of people aren't running catalytic converters. The electronic returnless fuel system. This is talking about how the fuel pressure is commanded by ECM, and then it talks via the, to the fuel pressure control module via the, uh, the CAN bus, and there's also a fuel pump control wire. And the fuel pressure sensor used to be connected directly to the ECM on these is going into a uh, more of a chassis module. This new system, meaning the new body style trucks with the E90 and uh, ECMs, they're not using the same fuel pump as before. They're using a brushless fuel pump, which is super cool. Uh, brushless technology will last longer, can make an immense more, immense amount of power for fuel flow. So this is kind of untested in terms of what these pumps are able to, to uh, put out. But it should be a lot more. Just like an RC car, a brushed motor versus a brushless, there's no comparison. Um, it's very cool, and they're even more efficient, so there should be less amp draw, and they should be quieter too. I don't think it talks about that in this document. Next, we're flexible fuel sensor. Um, this, these are very useful if you add them on because with this sensor installed, you will actually make more timing. Uh, you actually use the timing tables and fueling tables and you can make a good 30 or more horsepower with an actual flexible fuel sensor. The older, what most of them are is their uh, virtual sensor. All it's trying to do is guess what's going on and keep things running correctly. It does nothing to make any more power. If you run the actual sensor, you will make more power. And it's completely tunable. You can tell it how much more timing you want for 50% F ethanol mix or whatever. So very cool. I've yet to do that. Uh, I need to. Just haven't done it. I sell the kits on my website. So fuel cutoff mode. Man, this, uh, this works really well. So... On the older engines, when you hit your red line, basically 
your engine would be bounce. I call it bouncing off the rev limiter. You know, it'd just be like wah, 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 wah type of noise. On these, it's very confusing because you're literally hitting a wall. So you'll hit, if it's set to 5,500 RPMs, you'll just stay at exactly 5,500 RPMs. These systems are so controlled. That rev limit, rev limiter is so smooth, people will think there's something wrong. And it's just a very smooth rev limiter. And it th this ECU has complete control of power at all times, which can also be a headache. When we're trying to make full power, um, certain things can cause issues. You know, it hit a false rev limiter, you know, like right here, you know, vehicle speed is too high. So if this is set wrong, it's going to cause problems, um, all sorts of things. So fuel pressure sensor. Yeah, I talked about that, that you, on the uh, LE3s and LE6s, stuff like that. Basically, the, the E92 devices, for the most part, that fuel sensor went directly into the ECU. Um, now they're going into a chassis module. The Camaros use a chassis module as well, and that's where this fuel pressure sensor would go as well. Okay, right here, the fuel pump power, power control module. This is way different. It's a different design now. Um, no one's using this yet. No one's using the brushless fuel pump. It can be used. Uh, what's really cool, the big takeaway is, is using, you know, they call it three-phase motor. Well, that's just how a brushless motor works. You have three phases. So nothing fancy there. Any brushless tool or motor for the most part is three-phase. You have three motors. It's not like 12 volts. Um, in and out, it's uh, it's a pulse pulse pulsating uh, uh, power. So this is how that works. And I checked on the price of the fuel pump. Just curious. And if the, are these fuel pumps going to cost a thousand dollars? What's the deal? They are ninety dollars on Rock Auto. So that blew me away. Because uh, a buddy of mine, he has a Toyota uh, pickup truck, and the brushless pump on that thing is thirteen hundred dollars. So pretty cool that the price didn't go up with this but it looks like you'd have to run the chassis control module and the fuel pump control module for for all this to work correctly fuel injectors I used to tell people they ran at 100 volts um, I'm wrong um, right here you can see in this document they run at 65 volts so people ask like hey do I need to put a noise light on it I'm like no don't do that because it they don't run at 12 volts. Um, they, you can see right here, they're at 65 volts. So they might make a noid light to test them, but uh, if your injectors don't work, it's almost always a mismatch of ECU, harness, and uh, fuel sensor. Something's not aligned right, meaning they're out of the wrong years. So it's, that's why the computers are so big too, is it has all this technology to uh, boost the voltage and, and uh, run these injectors. The fuel pressure sensor, or I'm sorry, the fuel rail sensor, looks like a very simple uh, sensor of three wires going into it until you read what's going on here. Very cool. Um, it says the fuel rail pressure sensor has an internal microprocessor allows for four separate sensor outputs from one three-wire sensor. So I've noticed this. I'll see um, pressure like one and pressure two. But uh, it even showing something in the fuel rail temperature sensor as well. So a lot of information is coming from this magical little sensor. Um, I don't see how it has any type of microprocessor in it. It looks like it's just a pressure sensor the little connector on it but you know this is what GM saying how it works so that's how it works all right next great tech right here is a fuel tank pump module which is the fuel pump it's uh but it's more than that that's why they call it a module there's a lot going on in here and I try to use these when I can because of how it works and how it really makes things more reliable more quiet and you can use every last drop out of your fuel tank so what do we want to read about on here you know it's the same re reverse flow check valve it's trying to maintain that pressure so it starts up faster 
da, 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 fuel level, nothing special there. Fuel pump and reservoir assembly. Kind of interesting here, this one works a bit different. It's saying the ECM supplies voltage to the fuel pump driver control module for 30 seconds. Um, it used to be barely two seconds. So I'm not sure if that's correct. When you turn the key on, this pump's running continually for 30 seconds. Um, and it's going to maintain uh, the low pump speed, basically. So it's going to make about 40 pounds of pressure for startup. This is the, uh, by I call it a bypass valve, but right here is a pressure relief regulator valve. So basically when that thing goes to 100% duty cycle, this is going to maintain that uh, exact pressure, but it can't make any more. Um, this is what has to happen. If people run a fuel pressure control module on a standard fuel pump, um, which I try to do, you'll make 100 to 130 pounds of pressure and your fuel pump will fail. Um, if you want to use a fuel pressure control module on a aftermarket pump, you must have a regulator. That regulator needs to be set to around 74 PSI, and that's basically acting as a bypass. So anything below that, the fuel pressure control module can adjust the pressure, but anything above that is going to return to the tank. The, the module itself cannot control um, a wide open throttle. It just sends it max voltage, and it can't control that, that pressure. So it has the relief valve. All right. So this is super cool, especially in classic vehicles and things like that. Um, what happens here is the, um, no matter what happens, that bucket will have fuel in it and it's going to, this primary jet fills that reservoir of the tank module is basically, from what I understand, it's acting like the Venturi system. You'll see a little valve on the bottom of your, uh, module assembly. So at all times, that's just using the Venturi system effect or whatever to keep that, fuel module full of fuel. So that's how you can use every last drop of fuel. You don't need any baffling. You don't want any baffling because this system's continually keeping that um, completely filled up. Anything important here? It's not really. I mean, all this important, but it might not be interesting to a lot of people. The high pressure pump. Uh, I've had companies contact me like, what the heck, how's this thing operated? Right here, it's a 12-volt PWM signal. So that's what uh, is controlling that uh, high-pressure pump. And it, it's going to work from these pressures. I tell people if I'm doing a live tune and I'm watching their setup through like Team Viewer or something like that through HP Tuners, it's like it will not fire. These injectors will not fire until it gets almost to 300 PSI. And then it will allow the injectors to work and then your engine will start up so it shows right there 290 to uh, 2176 if it's an LT4 pump it goes up to about um, a little over 3,000 pounds of pressure all right we don't really care about the fuel lines Looking through here, run mode, starting mode. I believe the starting mode is a little different. ECM wake up, fuel pump prime. So as soon as you open up your door, your fuel pump will prime. Almost all new cars do that. It's wait, uh, wake your modules up. On a swap, of course, that's not going to happen. Once you turn your key on, then it's going to do that. Um, basically, they're saying a relay is supplying power to the fuel pump control module. It's just talking about that. All the different things, but that's not too important. It works just fine on swaps. You turn the key on the fuel pump or prime and you're good to go. So um, this is my first time doing a video like this. I'm just uh, capturing the, the screen right now and got a microphone. So I guess this will be part one. We're talking about the fuel system. Next, I'll have part two on to something else that's interesting.